best for me to start off with a little history. Uh, you know, you got three levels of government, federal, state, and local. Uh, each state tries to keep the uh, peace within its borders by providing its citizens public services that the federal government doesn't provide. Again, I hope you have fun and learn some neat and cool stuff. All right, thank you so much. Welcome to the Morganton Public Library. Have any of y'all been in here before? Yes. A lot of you, raise your hand. You library before? Good. How many of you have a library card? Okay. Did you get it through school or did you get it here in the library? This library you're standing in right now was actually built in the 1930s. Uh, there was an old house that was here, and you can kind of see a picture of that on the wall over here. It's called, it was called Rose Villa. Um, it was torn down, and this was built as a library in the 1930s. There was a library in Morganton before that, back to about the 18, mid 1870s. Um, there have been a place that you could get books uh, in, in Morganton. We have two other libraries. We have the Valdez Library and we have the Hildebrand Library. The Hildebrand Library didn't open until 1997. The Valdez Library opened in uh, 1967. So your library card is good at all three libraries. This is our genealogical room, um, what we call our North Carolina room, where you can find all kinds of Burke County history, but also history on Western North Carolina. Um, Gail here is our uh, reference library for the North Carolina room, and she actually does a lot of research for local people because they're very interested in their heritage, okay? We actually still have a microfilm machine here where you can look up old uh, newspaper articles and things like that. We have a lot of folks coming in, even uh, say if, uh, a family member has passed and they want to find out the lineage and area from where they came, um, this is a good place to come, but also historical issues here. Um, the section back there behind you is our media section. We've actually moved all our media up into that room. And it's also our reference section and our magazines back there. Um, down here we serve children throughout the year, um, birth through 12, and their parents. We do programs for parents as well as children. Hello, I'm Mike Long. I'm the Fire Marshal Emergency Management Director for Burke County. Greg Curry, EMS Director for Burke County. Uh, you're here with Emergency Services. It consists of 911 Communications, Burke County EMS, Fire Marshal, and Emergency Management. We're going to start you off today with uh, Ashley Taylor with uh, Burke County EMS, and she's going to talk about the EMS and let you go through the ambulance and see what all is going on there. Yes, sir different operations. This right here is our cardiac monitor. Any, anytime somebody's having chest pains or anything like that, we can hook this up to them. You got some stickers that go on them. You got leads that go all over their chest just as we can tell if they're having a heart attack or not. Now this thing, this thing don't protect all heart attacks, but it protects what we call STEMIs or ST elevated myocardial infarctions. And if we do that, our, our closest uh, STEMI facility is Fry. So we'll take everybody to Fry and hopefully by that time we, we've eased their chest pain off and everything and uh, they go in there and put a stand in the person can return back to their normal life maybe on a few more medications than normal but we we have probably one uh, one stimmy a week throughout the county and this is also if somebody goes into sudden cardiac arrest or anything like that this is also what we use to defibrillate them until we're doing quality cpr and This is the 911 Communication Center for right now for Burke County that we take care of all the 911 calls that come in through the county. Everything but the city of Morganton and the city of Valdez. They have their own uh, communication center at, at each one of the police departments. Um, that will all change once we go to the new communication center, uh, hopefully June the 3rd. We will be in one big building and we will do everything in that one building, the law enforcement, fire, rescue, everything, EMS. Um, at, the, but at this particular facility, we ha like I said, we take in all the 911 calls. If you live in the county, how many of you live outside the city of Morganton? If you dial 911, it's going to come in here. Okay, and then if you need law enforcement, we'll have to transfer your call to 
to the proper law enforcement that you might need. Um, we have four 911 lines that we have to, my partner and I have to monitor, plus multiple frequencies, radio frequencies that we have to monitor, EMS, fire, rescue, and that type of deal. Hey guys, my name is Steve Bennett. I'm the IT director for Burke County. Um, thanks for coming out for Youth and Government Day. Um, one of the things that I hope you guys have seen is uh, one common thread across all departments is technology is involved somehow. Uh, whether it's cell phones, fax machines, phones, uh, computers, uh, technology sh has aspects in, in every part of government. Uh, there's a weed and more stuff in there. Uh, right here houses batteries to run all of these computer systems in these three cabinets. These computer systems have to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That air conditioner behind you, we've turned it up so you guys can be more comfortable, but it normally sits at a balmy 65 degrees in here. Um, you might think that, hey, 65 degrees is uh, shorts and t-shirt weather. Uh, no, not air conditioning. Uh, it would be rather cold. Most of our guys have to wear jackets to be in here for a long amount of time. Hi, my name is Ashley Simmons. I work over on the health department side of our building. How many of you have been here and ever been in the conference room or have you guys been to the government day before and listened to some of our services and stuff? No? Yes? Okay, well, the health department is on this side of the building and then DSS is on this side and these ladies are going to talk about DSS here in just a little bit. Um, but I'm here to talk about the health department services and what we offer and what we do. Um, I'm actually in health education. What that means is I wear a lot of different hats. I do a lot of different things. I'm our preparedness coordinator, so for our emergency preparedness and all of our plans. I've been at the Department of Social Services uh, for almost 25 years. Uh, so some people ask me why I work here. I've had that ask a lot, and I think now it's just a calling. It's just something that I believe, I believe in, and I thoroughly enjoy being here. But as far as the um, economic services, um, those are the programs of Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid is a low-cost health insurance program uh, that is funded uh, federally and by, and by the state. Similar to what Ashley was explaining, um, unfortunately, a lot of the information that we have in our offices or um, clients that we have coming back and forth, we try to maintain their confidentiality whenever possible. and, and, and so we, we protect that information. So we're not able to take you back to um, where we work, but um, I am glad to have you here today. Um, Child Protective Services. Um, well, that's the designated social services agency that receives and investigates reports of abuse, neglect, and dependency. Elections in North Carolina are governed by the State Board of Elections in Raleigh and they're funded by our local county commissioners. Um, the election law reads that they must adequately fund elections and they do. They must give us what we need to conduct the elections fairly and smoothly for every, every voter. Um, early voting is um, before every election. We have used to be 13 days this year. It's been cut down to seven and a half. It starts this time on the 24th day of April and it runs through May the 3rd. We're open one Saturday for people that cannot get here during the weekdays. We have extended our hours during the weekdays so that people that get off at five can still vote. We're open till six, Monday through Friday from during early voting. Then the regular election day is May the 6th. Our goal is to make the economy better here. And that means bringing things to the community, such as retail. You know, you notice a lot of shopping stuff going on. We're a part of that. As well as industry, which employs people. The redevelopment of things, like the Broughton campus, will go through a redevelopment over the next couple of years. As well as how do we take the natural assets of the area, the state parks, the greenways, the lakes, and turn that into an economic development strategy. So we're in a lot of everything, uh, a lot of different things. We don't really make anything, we don't really control anything, but we're a part of a lot of things. So if companies are interested to come in the area, we work with them to match the best locations for them. If people are interested in going back to work, we're a partner in some workforce development initiatives to help get people retrain. 
we have brought jobs to Burke County, so there's jobs out there. Here's one thing that you have to be cognizant of. Everybody's not going to go to college, and we understand that. When companies move in here, here's the one thing we can't do. This is fact. Neither one of us can make a job because we don't own a company to make a job. So when you run an election, you hear somebody say, I'm going to bring jobs to Burke County. I can't bring them one. And I said that in my campaign. I got blasted in the paper for saying that, but that is the truth. I can't bring one job. We have to depend on the state, which county government is nothing but an arm of the state. So we have to depend on private entities such as BDI, Burke Development Inc. That's our economic development arm to go out to try to find businesses. So what do you think is the number one factor for a business to move into Burke County? What are they looking for? Anybody got a clue? Take a guess. Qualified employee. They're looking number one for workforce. Do we have a workforce here that can do the jobs for their company when they get here? What's the second thing they look for? Quality of life. If you're on this board and you had the same information I had, and you are being ethical and as fair as you can to the subject matter. 98% of the time you're gonna vote the way I vote. Congratulations on what you guys are doing and I think this is just your last stop. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanna speak a few minutes with you and share some concerns that I have about substance abuse in Burke County and give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you have and I'm going to do a very quick 101 version of this. I speak about 30 to 45 minutes when I'm speaking about substance abuse but I think it's important for you to realize that substance abuse is really driving crime in Burke County and I'm really dependent on your age group to make a positive difference in turning the tide uh, here in the county.